afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Cliffy Land's Global Cooking Challenge. Uh, tonight is night two of cooking the food of the United Kingdom as we work our way through our 193 UN member states in our four-year Learn to Cook Challenge as we work our way from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. Uh, tonight we are cooking Northern... Oops, sorry, I forgot to change that. We're cooking Northern Ireland. Uh, we're cooking a Kipper Kedgri. And that's what we're making. So uh, we've done our prep already. So uh, let me. We are simulcasting on Meerkat and Periscope. Uh, thank you for the like uh, typing, and uh, thank you for the like, Razvan. Uh, so let's uh, flip uh, the uh, around. Whoop de doo, and ah. So we're looking a lot of different recipes for Northern Ireland, and uh, kind of came up with about 20 different ways to make potatoes. And uh, that didn't leave me a whole lot in the way of proteins. So uh, after kind of deciding to um, put aside the um, just many potato dishes, uh, hello Daryl, uh, we are uh, going to be doing this dish. And uh, again, it is a kipper category. We've actually done our prep for it already. So first thing we're going to have to do is I'm going to go over to the stove there and I'm going to put in uh, our pre-cooked eggs into our pot of boiling water. Let me do that carefully so as I don't burn myself. Okay, one, this is four, going to be four hard-boiled eggs in here. Two, three, and I will move the uh, everyone and the uh, Periscope people will get the bird's eye view in just a moment. And I need to set my timer here for 10 minutes. Uh, so set timer for 10 minutes. Uh, thank you for the uh, restream robot. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we've got our timer set for 10 minutes. The land of potatoes. Yes, indeed. Um, Stace. Yes, uh, I saw there's like a million different ways to make potatoes. When we cooked Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, way back before Meerkat, uh, we did an Irish stew and did a soda bread. So I didn't want to like repeat those. In case you're wondering, everything is located at cliffyland.com. You can find information about uh, the countries, pictures of everything, uh, links to the original recipes, videos of everything from Meerkat going forward till now. Uh, so it would be like from Pakistan forward. And um, so, like I said, we're week, up to week 184 of 193 countries. And uh, when we hit Zimbabwe at the end of July, we're going to be uh, gonna doing a few territories, and then we're going to be doing uh, Puerto Rico, which is my people, uh, as a big hoedown at some point, taking some time off before we come back and start all over again from A. And that we will be doing on the new streaming app, Busker, which will likely be taking the place of the Meerkat stream. So if you are in Meerkat and you'd like to keep seeing this, download a Busker. It's a very cool app. Uh, and um, who we have? Uh, Hamoudi, greetings. Assalamu alaikum. And yes. So. That's what we're doing. We're boiling that, and uh, let me show you what we have going. So uh, since you're going to be getting the bird's eye view anyway, I'm going to set up the periscope people uh, for the up in the sky look at things first. So you just sit tight for a moment. So everybody over here, we've got our prep, whoa, our prep going over here. Uh, so this is our kippers that we have sitting right over here as well as the rest of our prep you get to come over this way and see uh, we've taken care of a lot of uh, our work already here you get to sit on the stove so we have uh, got our kippers uh, our rice whoops you get to sit over here uh, we have our kippers our rice onions a uh, vegetable broth and then we have our uh, curry powder turmeric uh, crushed cardamom seeds, cinnamon stick, bay leaf, uh, some chopped parsley, and uh, some torn up parsley for our dressing at the end. So, um, let me, you know, you get a better view of it over here because we have one step to do uh, that we're going to be needing this space for, so might as well do it right here. Now I need to get out a baking dish. Oh, that's going to be exciting. Ugh. Okay, 
Okay, baking dish. Here we go. So our baking dish, we're going to be putting our kippers into a foil packet. But for that, I'm going to need to preheat the oven to... Now, this uh, recipe was in Celsius, so uh, we have to sort of convert it for Fahrenheit here. So that's going to be 392 on the uh, oven temperature. And we're going to make foil packet uh, for the kippers here. These are smoked kippers, uh, which are herring, uh, which uh, I had to get frozen. They weren't available uh, fresh anywhere here in South Florida, in case you're wondering where we are. We're in Jupiter, Florida, which is about two hours north of Miami, about an hour north of Fort Lauderdale, and about half an hour north of West Palm Beach. So that usually the people tend to ask where we are. So uh, I had to get them frozen, defrosted them earlier. So we're going to be making a foil packet here for the kippers. So, yeah, you can't really see there. Okay. Hopefully you get a better view there. Alrighty, so here we go with the kippers. You know, I don't think I've ever actually cooked with uh, kippers before. We've done a few things with smoked salmon and smoked trout. Um, but it's weird since uh, we're basically a fishing town here, but it's just all stuff that you can, you know, get off the coast of Florida. So uh, getting stuff that's from the North Atlantic and such is uh, a different proposition. So this is eventually going to be um, flaked and mixed in with the rice, which is uh, very much an Indian flavored uh, preparation, what with the curry powder and the turmeric and such. Uh, one of the deals with the, uh, as I mentioned previously, with the combination of Indian flavors and British food, how curries is basically, encompasses uh, what a lot of uh, food is. Uh, hey, Perry, how you doing? Um, the uh, history on that is that when the British uh, well, actually, when the European explorers found in uh, found India, they discovered the uh, garam masala, the spice mixes that were popular in the region. And although the Spanish and the Portuguese tasted them, they didn't really, you know, go crazy for them. Hey, Derek, you made it! Uh, making the uh, kippers uh, kedgeri, as you suggested. Uh, this one is from a uh, restaurant in, in Belfast, so hence the Northern Ireland connection. But back to what we were saying, the, uh, when the Europeans had the flavors, it was the, Brit uh, the British that uh, were so enamored by it, they tried to cobble together what they thought those uh, flavors were, and uh, hence they came up with uh, the idea of gravies and curries with uh, curry powder, which again is kind of a British creation. So that's what we have here. So again, we are getting our bay leaf and we are sticking... Thanks for the like and the restream, by the way, Derek. And very, very happy to see you here, as always. So we have our uh, bay leaf that we're putting on that. Oh, by the way, I need to take pictures for the blog. Again, the blog is at cliffyland.com. You can follow on Facebook, on t uh, Twitter, on Tumblr, on Instagram, on Pinterest, and now on YouTube. Please, if you would, uh, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you for the hearts there. Um, and uh, who do we have? Uh, Nugar, thank you for the like and the restream. So we're going to make a foil packet here. I obviously did not put enough foil down. And as we're still preheating the oven, this isn't going to go in just yet. And uh, our timer still has about two minutes to go on the eggs. So, not good with making the foil packets. As uh, if you've been watching for a long time, you know I'm like the world's worst rapper. And uh, Macklemore ain't got nothing on me. So. So we're wrapping this up, putting it on the baking sheet. Hey, Lavender Fam Chi, thank you for the like and the restream. So we've wrapped this up in a little foil packet, and we're still waiting for the oven to preheat. Uh, but we have got uh, our eggs boiling right now, and uh, we are 
uh, going to bake these uh, kippers for eight minutes, but uh, I have sitting over to the side a uh, bowl of ice water right here. In fact, uh, might as well move some things around here so I don't have to move the cameras. Kippers go this way. Go get our boiling water here. And uh, I'm gonna be peeling those, oh, I knew I was missing something, uh, those eggs. And cracking them, so I'll need a spoon for that. So, like I said, we have another uh, minute and change on the uh, boiling water for the uh, boiled eggs. These are going to be dressed with uh, hard-boiled eggs at the end. So again, it's uh, rice and with the uh, flaked fish and the various Indian spices. If anyone has any questions, uh, this would be a good time to ask in the uh, one minute we have before uh, those eggs are ready. And then we're going to shock them in the ice bath here. Uh, I have my... Here we have our bowl and this ready to a uh, slotted spoon to pull them out. I would have this over the stove right now, but I'm not gonna be on the stove, uh, but for a minute and plus. You're gonna get kind of a steamy face there on the Periscope. Um, and uh, still working on uh, a video for our YouTube channel uh, as a matter of introduction and promotion for uh, phase two of the challenge, which is gonna start in the fall. Uh, so what is on uh, what is the whole menu tonight? Just that. We're just doing this one dish, the Kippered Kid Gris. Uh, so, hope that doesn't disappoint. Um, it is kind of surprising that I'm not doing something with potatoes here for Northern Ireland, but we do have the Northern Ireland music going, so I hope that helps. Uh, ding, 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 ding. So there's our timer done. So we're gonna remove our eggs and drop them into the ice water. Two, three, and uh, and uh, Sunday, Derek is our Scotland night. We're gonna be doing Scotland on Sunday. So I uh, haven't decided what I'm making yet, so here's your one chance. You, you gave me some good suggestions on the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so that, you know, I saw these, uh, the Kid Guri uh, come up here uh, when I was looking through the, for a, a recipe for Northern Ireland. I thought, hey, this one is from Belfast, and you just mentioned that dish. And uh, although it seems, uh, I read it, it seems like something of a breakfast dish, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I probably am. So, uh, so we have this in here in the ice bath. And we're gonna let that sit in there just for a minute before we uh, start cracking and peeling that uh, those eggs. So here we go. Wish me luck. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this is when my hands freeze off. Ah, uh, thank you for the hearts. Okay. Ah, frozen hands. Uh, the idea was, uh, the, there are many different ways to hard boil an egg. Uh, I have normally used the method recommended from the Martha Stewart uh, website, since that seems to be the, the most popular. Uh, but this one is from Savour. And uh, it seemed kind of straightforward, saying about seven minutes if you want the eggs to be... Oh, God, my hands are going to freeze. Uh, seven minutes if you want the uh, innards to be soft and uh, 10 if you want more of a hard-boiled, hard center. They said if you go past 10 minutes, uh, then you get into uh, chalky territory and, and no one wants that. So we have four eggs here. This dish serves four, there are really only two of us here. So uh, once more, we're gonna have leftovers. We had leftovers uh, galore on the uh, English dish, which we did on Friday, which was a uh, roast beef, with Yorkshire pudding and uh, roasted vegetables. And we have, uh, hey, thank you. Uh, oh, that's Derek, TNT. What's with the TNT? Explain yourself. Um, ah, hands are cold in that ice water. Yeah, um, I'm 
I know they don't have to be icy to uh, to peel it, but uh, it's, I didn't feel like doing it under running water the whole time, so there's that. Ah, I hope I didn't miss a comment. Uh, so again, uh, I have decided that uh, at least for phase two, if not before, uh, we'll be uh, flipping from a Meerkat over to Busker, B-U-S-K-E-R. Look for the app. It's pretty cool, does the same things, and it's not, um, you know, Meerkat is, isn't, isn't uh, as active as it once was. Uh, thank you for the like, uh, Bella. How you doing? So, um, yep, this goes here. This is two, if I don't freeze my hands off. And I always have to keep talking because if I don't, when I put it up on the YouTube channel, the, uh, the copyright gods all jump down my throat. So, uh, I already had that issue with the British one last, uh, on Friday. So, yeah, ba -doo. So again, Sunday uh, is Scotland, and then we'll be finishing off uh, United Kingdom on Tuesday with Wales. So uh, we, we'll, if, if you are from there, if you've got great suggestions, uh, I'll be happy to uh, see if I can I can pull it off. It's always a challenge to try to do uh, s stuff that I can do live, that I can handle with my abilities, with what I can get. I can't get on Busker. Um, may I may I ask perchance uh, why that that would be? I'm curious. Uh, it's a new it's a new thing on my uh, on my end. I've just uh, been watching a couple of my Meerkat regulars that have uh, shown up over there. So, uh, but I will be uh, on there. I'm I'm debating. Uh, I mean, the Periscope thing is nice, but there aren't really. At the end of the day, since there are so many people on Periscope, it's really hard to get discovered there. Uh, so I'm debating whether doing NOM uh, also um, for Phase 2. Phase 2 uh, is going to be, one, again, again one, once I hit Zimbabwe in the end of July, and uh, then we do some territories and other non-UN nations, uh, so like bonus countries, and then uh, if I can get the family over from Puerto Rico for a big party, Android. Oh, is that the deal? I would be quite happy for you... Uh, do they smoke salmon on the pheasant and venison with the cakes? Uh, see, I think pheasant, that's, that's what threw me. I don't think I'll be able to find pheasant here. Um, that, uh, I mean, I could try the fancy, fancy food boutique, but I'm sure they're, I, I, I fear that they would tell me it would cost like $80 million a pound. Sort of like the ostrich steaks for uh, South Africa. They were $70 a pound, which was uh, a little steep. So we have our eggs over here. Uh, venison. Oh, venison is another thing. It's hard to find venison here. Um, the, when I asked around uh, way back when I cooked Finland, uh, they were telling me that, uh, oh, check out this one place, and this one place is a place for hunters to bring their dead animals for them to butcher. Uh, they didn't, you know, have, you know that themselves and then they said oh venison would be 80 million dollars again a pound i was thinking you've got to be kidding so it's going to be tricky finding venison uh grouse 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 that's like a pigeon or something isn't it um uh, i'll see i'll see I'll, I'll check it out i'll see what i can find uh i have i have this weekend to do so uh still waiting on the preheating on the on the oven here so uh we're in a little bit of a a holding pattern, but at this point, um, Periscope can move up over the stove. So hold on. Rah, uh, shift. Rah, 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 ah. Okay. And now you go here. Rah, rah, ah. Stay. Sit, Ubu, sit. Ah. Good dog. Okay. And grouse, grouse, grouse. What is grouse? Here's some information. Uh-huh. That's what I thought. 
Yeah, I'm going to see what I can find. Like I said, the geography uh, works against me uh, when it comes to finding certain things. Uh, typically, the things that have been hardest to find have been um, African greens, so always keep substituting um, spinach for those. Uh, but um, proteins-wise, uh, sometimes things get tricky too. So um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, okay, here goes. So we're going to stick the... Uh, kippers, which are in the foil packets with the bay leaf, into the stove here for eight minutes. Ah. Set timer for eight minutes. We have a whiskey named after eight grouse whiskey. is very famous. That sounds familiar. Uh, but then again, Scotland. I mean, scotch for Pete's sake. So, uh, give me one second for cleanliness here. They have condensation from the uh, ice bucket here, so a little ice bucket challenge. Okay, so we're gonna go on to. Uh, I really hope this isn't ready too early. That's so. That's one thing I'm a little worried about, but we're gonna we're gonna see. Um, so we're gonna get two tablespoons of uh, canola oil. Uh, hello, Kiskafoda. Uh, into the uh, skillet over here. One tablespoon, two tablespoons of canola oil, vegetable oil, and going to heat that up for a minute while our fish cook. I'm going to put that on kind of a lower heat uh, because uh, we're having a timing issue here. So again, we are making the kipper kidgari with the kippers, which is a smoked herring, and they are in the oven right now with the bay leaves in a packet. Then we're going to have in here the onions, and then the rice is going to cook uh, with the uh, curry powder. Uh, thank you for the hearts. Thank you very much. Uh, we have the hearts. Uh, the, 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 the. We have the uh, curry powder, the turmeric, and the uh, cardamom, which we have crushed uh, a wee bit. A wee bit, aye. Um, and uh, Derek knows, because we've had this conversation before, but um, I am 132nd Northern Irish I, 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 from Ulster, uh, I gather. Um, my, my 132nd. Everything else is all Puerto Rican and Spanish, but uh, if I go back that far, that's straight line. So make of that what you will. This is the... the, the other than Spain, this is like this the other like ancestral country um, that I've done so far on, on my personal behalf. So there's that. Also, I had forgotten that Van Morrison is from Northern Ireland, from Belfast. Uh, so uh, we have uh, five and a half more minutes on the uh, on the fish in there, and I and I need to slow down because uh, I don't want to be finished too early because uh, the husband doesn't get home until a certain time, and that would be a problem. So, uh, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get myself uh, my water. Don't go away. Okay. So how's everybody doing? Big, anybody big, big plans for the weekend? Uh, this is gonna be nice for me that uh, this weekend we're just gonna be here. We're not going anywhere. Usually we're going to Miami, um, every other weekend. Last weekend we went to Puerto Rico to see the family, uh, which is the reason why normally I would have done United Kingdom this past week, ending last Tuesday. But since, you know, United Kingdom, we have four countries, we have so many people from uh, the UK who watch our streams, particularly on Meerkat, that it would seem unfair to try to, like, throw everyone into one night. So I decided to stretch out UK for a week and a half. So we had Tuesday, and then we have today for Northern Ireland, Sunday for Scotland, and next Tuesday for Wales. And that will do UK, and after that we will be doing the United States of America, which is going to be really strange, because when you're American, and someone says we're cooking, you need to cook the food of the United States, that's really weird. Uh, I've got a date on Sunday, first date in two years. Oh my goodness, well congratulations on the date. Um... Golly gee. Well, you know what? 
Derek, for you, I could switch things. I could switch things up. Because you are, are the proud Scotsman that you are and, and such a loyal viewer that uh, for you, I could switch things around. I could swap Wales and Scotland because I have not firmly decided what to do. So uh, I, 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 I could do that for you if, if, that, if, if, if you're going to be busy. I know it's later there than it is here. Mm. Okay, you have three minutes on the fish, which is in the oven right now. The hairy. Uh, the, the recipe did not specifically say fresh or anything, so I hope the fact that it was smoked is not going to be a problem. Um, kippered herring. That's all I know. Does kippered herring necessarily mean uh, smoked? I'm not really sure. We're learning as we go. This is whole thing is a learning process. Uh, oh, um, yes, I was talking about I'm working on a video uh, to be an introductory uh, video on the YouTube channel, which will sort of introduce our new logo, our new slogan. Uh, uh, Kid Gree requires smoked fish. Good, then I'm on board. Um, uh, a video, phase two. Uh, new logo, new slogan, and uh, like I said, we're going to be trying to uh, switch from... Maybe Busker will have their app by, uh, by the time I make a switch for uh, the Android people. I did not realize it was uh, iPhone only. It seems very new right now. Um, but uh, we'll be uh, simulcasting on two on two things. Doing the Periscope right now, uh, and it has a larger audience, uh, though fewer people show up, uh, but they have the replay action, uh, and they can be in uh, landscape mode, which is important, uh, because uh, I want to be able to save these videos and uh, edit them and put them onto YouTube for phase two. So instead of having the long streams, uh, there will be short videos that will be like three or four minutes long, which will cover the, the thrust of everything and uh, perhaps have the recipe. And for that, I really would like people's feedback. Uh, you can follow again on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Pinterest. Just look for Cliffyland or go to cliffyland.com. And uh, and let me know what you think. Well, how you would if you would, if you would look at short form four minute videos, uh, you know what would you like them to be? Do you just want recipes? Do you want you know some of the entertainment value here? Uh, what what is it that rocks your world? I'll be home on Sunday in plenty time for Scotland. Oh, okay, good. Then we'll stick with the plan A. Thank you, Derek. Okay, so we'll break out the Sheena Easton music and go crazy nuts. Uh, no, I mean, I would like to be playing music from, you know, uh, the more popular music from artists of the different countries, uh, but then again, I keep, that's more likely to run into copyright issues, so I would be playing Van Morrison now otherwise, and this is kind of why I'm talking like this and not stopping, in case you're wondering. No, I have not done coke. Okay, so we've got 28 seconds to go on the Kippered Herring, uh, which is in the fridge, which means I need to get my oven mitts out, so... I don't stick my hand into a burning oven. Uh, my baby takes the morning train. Indeed, You know, that song was called 9 to 5 in the UK, but at the time in the United States, uh, Dolly Parton had her song 9 to 5. So uh, when they released it in the States, they changed the name to Morning Train here. More random information than you could possibly need. And again, we have myths. Oops, speaking of myths, uh, there goes my timer. So it's time to take the uh, kippers out of the oven, off. Okay. Don't put your face in a hot oven. Ow! Okay. Yowza. Yeah. Here we go. So I'm going to put this right here. Uh, you can see there, that's good, so I'm going to switch you over this way. And uh, let's see about unwrapping that sucker, and we're going to put it in a bowl, which we have over here. And uh, we've got a fork to flake it somewhere here. All right, so here we go. Unwrapping this puppy. Huh? Okay, I can touch it. Uh, hey, Tachi, how you doing? Good seeing you. We are making our kippers kidri, uh for Northern Ireland. 
Uh, the kippers have been in the oven for about eight minutes. And now they're out. Look at that. And I need to flake it and set it aside. So uh, we're gonna lose those bay leaves. And then you go bye bye. Ein zwei. And oops, sorry, I didn't see your comment. You might want to write it again. That's what happens with Periscope. The stuff vanishes before you can see it. Uh, send it to me by to love love kid greet. Oh, great, good. Okay, well, I'm glad, and thank you again for the suggestion. Okay, you go this way. So now the trick is going to be, and this is a new one on me, uh, trying to get the bones out of this sucker. If you've been following along, you'll notice that I uh, sort of avoided doing uh, any fish dish where there was the possibility of bones for this very reason. Because it's, uh, I'm, I'm not well versed in this. And having to pick bones out of your mouth is not fun. And uh, again, my technique might be like totally off, and probably is. Because uh, this is all teaching myself. When I started back in September of 2012, um, I really, I just couldn't boil water. Everything, I freaked out about every living thing. I mean, just how, how to, you know, peel an onion. I spent, you know, an hour trying to, to find out how, because I had no idea. Okay. So, we're gonna flake you. We're gonna flake, thank you for the hearts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. into the bowl. Back in bowl. I never get tired of that joke. Okay. Okay. Flaking. Come on. Come on, baby. This is a lot tougher than it looks. Be easier to do this with my hands. That's easier. Why didn't I do that in the first place? Now I don't have any Guinness on hand, so you know that that could be a problem. You know what? Um, at the um, Whatchamadougal, the uh, at Epcot, in uh, which we go to all the time because we're nearby and we love it. Um, at the uh, British Pavilion, uh, there it's like about one of the last places I went to to uh, to eat because uh, it's sort of like a pub. It's a pub-like thing. But uh, wow, they had a snake bite there. I had never had one of those before. Now it's like my favorite thing. I have to have one every time I go. And it's just so simple, is it? Le lemonade and, and, and cider, I believe. Okay, trying to get these pesky little uh, bones out. Okay, here we go, number two. This is a pound, this is roughly a pound on the, um, ah, kek, 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 on the kippered herring. Okay. Thankfully, it's not too hot for me to handle with my hands. I really should go to Ireland. For your eyes only, yes. For your eyes only and um, Sugar Walls, that, uh, the song that launched the... Uh, well, you're, you're over there, so you don't know what the Parents Music Resource Council. Modern Girl, yes. Uh, Devil in a Fast Car was an underrated one. And uh, their song, 99... Uh, it's a 99 and a half, I think it's called is um, 
just remarkable. It's written by Prince. I mean, so is Sugar Wolves, but that's more popular. But this other song is really one of her best things ever. Um, and a lot of people don't know it because it wasn't really a hit. Uh, but it was super great. So if you're, in, if you're into that kind of thing. I'm a modern... Yes. And, uh, and I always said, you should have been with me. Beautiful, beautiful song. Of course, we're, now we're talking about Scotland when we should be talking about Northern Ireland. Uh, anyone else from Northern Ireland? Uh, that comes to mind? I was busy looking into trying to get my food products and to do further research into my uh, national trivia. Uh, I didn't realize the whole business with uh, the uh, national parliaments and or whatever, you know, in the different uh, countries, and the uh, whole deal with uh, even in the 2000s with Northern Ireland was very confusing for me because that's not the sort of thing we keep up with here. Okay, so we've got our flaked fish here, and we're ready to put that aside. Ta-da! Yay! Okay, so this is going to go aside. I need to put this on something because it's all gross on the bottom right now. Okay. Ah, shoot. Okay, one minute. Got to wash up. Okay. Sit tight. Be right back with you. Wait, this smells so good right now. Uh, the very famous singer Joseph Locke. Huh. I am not familiar. I got greetings from Somalia. Wow. Hello. Uh, are you in Somaliland or uh, what's the other one? Um, I mean, or like Mogadishu or what's the other one? Punt. Which one are you in? I find Somalia very interesting. We, uh, I lived in Columbus, Ohio uh, for a number of years, and that's got the second largest Somali population in the United States. Uh, so got to eat uh, Somali restaurants and, uh, and you too. Well, yes, but they're, they're from, I thought they were from the Republic of Ireland as opposed to Northern Ireland. Oh, well, our Somali friend went away. Uh, okay, so we've heated up our... Uh, hold on, let me get this picture here. Okay, so we've heated up our oil and now we're ready to move on. Put this away. Uh, with the onions. Am I right? Yes. So, onions go in and they're going to be softened for about five minutes. That's the millionth picture of onions going into oil for me. I have so many, it's not even funny. Okay, so we're going to soften these onions for about five minutes. Who are some famous people from Northern Ireland? Let's see what. Let's, let's see. Do. Let's see. Here's what I found on the web for where some famous people from Northern. Since we're killing time, Somaliland. Yes. Very nice. Um, I have a, a friend who who traveled the world, went to every country, and when he went to Somaliland, he went to Somaliland. Uh, and uh, and enjoyed it. He said it was very nice, and uh, people really weren't aware of the the situation, how the different parts of the country there are. So greetings. Hope hope hope, hope this finds you well and happy. So again, this is our food from Northern Ireland. Uh, this is our kippers kedgri. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. We are sweating our onions. Ah, very. Oops, I missed the last part of that before it disappeared. I'll, I'll keep looking up. 
part of the problem of doing the bird's eye view. It's very crazy here. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I gather that. Uh, the different partitions and such being uh, being what they are. Um, uh, Ms. Jean, I'm guessing that was an emoji. Oh, Jeff. Um, yes, it, uh, it's a complicated situation there. I hope, I hope things work out. My friend is a pirate for three years. Wow. That, uh, um, that's, I, I, I gathered about the fishing uh, situation how they uh, people came and uh, without uh, a working navy people came and stole all the fish uh, and then that's what led the, the fishermen into into the piracy thing um, so whew, yeah sorry sorry to hear that uh, it's a, 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 a dicey situation for everyone involved so, we have another three minutes here on our uh, onions. Uh, then, we're, after that, we're going to add our cardamom pods, which are sitting right here. And then, after our cardamom pods, uh, we're going to add the other spices, our uh, turmeric, our uh, curry powder, and our cinnamon stick. So, get those ready. Uh, put hot sauce. Yeah, um, not so much uh, with the hot sauce with the uh, Ireland. Um, the it's it's curious about uh, spices and and food that it seems. Well, I mean, it just makes sense. The the more tropical the country, the hotter it is, the more likely there is going to be uh, spice, hot spice in the food, and that one of the reasons is that it the sweating cools you off. So, uh, one of the reasons why people in uh, more northern countries, you're less likely to find spicy food, and uh, Northern Ireland certainly being like that. Uh, it's curious that they do have the, um, enjoying the, the, the spicy flavors, though not the hot, you know, capsicum, spicy heat uh, type things. In fact, uh, genetically, like I said, I'm 132nd from Northern Ireland. The rest, uh, Spanish, Puerto Rican, and uh, that uh, is also very much not spicy. Uh, Puerto Rican food is not, not, not spicy. And uh, my family, whenever I mention spicy food, they freak out saying, how can you possibly eat that? And I say, well, you know, I didn't start out being able to handle spicy food, but in the process of cooking every country, uh, I've come to not only enjoy spicy food, I've come to enjoy really spicy food. So, go figure. Things change. I think my DNA changed when I cooked Bhutan. When I cooked uh, their version of mac and cheese, which was, uh, the mac was all jalapeno peppers. And the cheese should have been yak cheese, but I couldn't find yak dairy in South Florida. Go figure. Okay, we are at time here, so now we are going to add the rest of our spices here. Um... Hold on a second, I got, I got a message coming in. Uh, okay. Alrighty. So our cardamom pods. Going in. And followed by our turmeric. And our curry powder. And the cinnamon stick. And we're gonna cook that for about a minute. Uh, Fergal Sharky, before and after the undertones. Very few people here know Fergal Sharky. Uh, I mean, since I'm a big music fan, um, I have one or two things by Fergal Sharky, but um, m most people here wouldn't have the first clue what you were talking about. Was it two? Was it two nations divided by a, a mutual language or something? Is that? what they used to say about Americans and Brits. So, uh, we're doing just about a minute here on this uh, before we start adding in the rice, which is basmati rice. I know, sorry about the lighting. But basmati rice, which is a uh, 
an Indian rice, and I mean specifically Indian, if it's called basmati rice, uh, to it's a, like a copyright thing. If it's called basmati rice, it has to be from India. You're not allowed to call it basmati rice if it's not from India. So there's a company that, uh, this rice select company that uh, I got this from, that uh, they, they have their version of basmati rice, but they can't call it that, so they call it jasmati rice or kasmati. Yeah, kasmati with a K. Uh, copyright reasons again. So uh, now we're going to add our rice in. And this is uh, roughly two cups. It's uh, 350 grams if we're on the metric system. And we're going to add the vegetable stock, which in this case is what, 500 milliliters, which is basically uh, one and a quarter cups. And this vegetable stock, incidentally. And it's uh, unsalted vegetable stock. So we're going to bring this up to a boil, and then we're going to let it simmer. Uh, bon appetit, thank you. Thank you, my friend. Um, so we're going to bring that to a boil, and then we're going to have to cover it, which means Cliffy needs to go find his lid. And uh, I think this is it. Yeah, that's the one. I think it is. Well, if it's not, I got another one. And uh, so we're just waiting for that. Thanks for the hearts. Uh, so waiting for this to come to a boil. Uh, thank you, uh, Alexa. X, sorry. How do I do this? There we go. Okay. Oh, Danny boy. That's, I think Danny boy is probably my favorite Irish song. I mean, it's a cliche, but I just I, that, that, that Irish song I love. Others, other Irish songs I'm not, I'm not that wild about, but that one I really am. Uh, hello, thank you for joining. So we're waiting for this to come to a boil again. Uh, if you're just joining us, this is our Kipper Kedgri for Northern Ireland. We are breaking up United Kingdom into the four attending countries. Instead of doing one week, we did one week and one and a half weeks on the UK this week. So this is uh, last Tuesday was England when we did the roast beef with uh, Yorkshire pudding and roasted vegetables, which we still have leftovers on. Uh, then tonight is Northern Ireland. The, having OCD, I need to go alphabetically. So this come to a boil. I'm gonna bring it down to a simmer. I'm gonna cover it and let it cook for about 15 minutes. Am I right? Set timer for 15 minutes. And uh, then that will be okay. Uh, but then, uh, then so we're doing uh, Scotland on Sunday night, and uh, we will be finishing up with Wales on Tuesday. So that will cover all four uh, countries of the United Kingdom. Um, although I gather there's also the Duchy of Cornwall, uh, and then of course there's all the million overseas territories and the Isle of Man and uh, the British Virgin Islands and you know things from here to Kingdom Come and the Falklands and you name it. Uh, so that things get tricky that way. Uh, Shoker, thank you for the like. And so while that cooks, we, whoopsie, I missed something. Did I? No, I did not. Okay. Uh, I am going to take the hard boiled eggs that we uh, boiled earlier and I need to, uh, I'm going to quarter them. I'm going to get my paring knife for this. Uh, do I have an extra bowl? I'll do it in here. Okay. And carefully not slicing my hand open. Don't startle me right now. Okay. Ta-da. 
I don't normally eat hard boiled eggs. I tend to avoid them actually. So, uh, but when it comes to a recipe, you know, I'm a good sport. Just something about the egg whites just have always kind of grossed me out. I mean, people eating deviled eggs. I, t I mean, when I actually had one and ate it, I went, eh, that's not bad, but just, just the smell and it's, it's just associated with being, a, you know, an old fuddy-duddy, an old white, you know, middle-aged white person in the United States eating deviled eggs uh, that I, yeah. Uh, the empire spread its bland cuisine across many continents. They took, uh, they, they, they um, got a lot of stuff back. Uh, it's weird how stuff went back and forth. Uh, how here the idea of, you know, the curries being a thing. In fact, when uh, I first started on Meerkat here uh, with some of the UK viewers and they were saying, oh, when you get to the to UK, it's going to be, uh, what curry are you going to be doing? And I was thinking, curry? How is that? Like, that's that's an Indian thing. How is that a British thing? But, you know, then I read how, well, it's, they really like gravy. Uh, so... The apparently the chicken tikka masala is uh, considered uh, by some the national dish of uh, Great Britain, uh, which kind of surprised me. Uh, but no, the idea of uh, the, the influence that the British uh, going from Britain to you know in that direction. And speaking of the food, uh, I saw it to to some degree was and uh, to some degree. Uh, is the, you know, kind of tradi what we think of traditional here is the, you know, sit down at the table and you have your, you know, meat, your starch, your protein, you know, da da. Um, I gather that that was sort of a British thing that uh, went forward since that's not what everyone else did. Uh, like when I, like when you cook Port, uh, but then when I saw how when we cook Portugal, how Portugal, uh, I know all the different the colonies it had, but it's curious how there were shipping routes and they shipped things back and forth. So these peppers that came from Africa, you know, went to the other colonies in Africa, to the other colonies in the Pacific and uh, in uh, Brazil and such. And uh, so, and the Spanish, the saffron went there, but they couldn't get saffron in some places. Uh, so they kind of went with other stuff that could grow in those other places. So the back and forth. Teenage kicks for undertones. Teenage kicks the undertones. I've heard of that. I've heard of that. I have not heard it, though. So I'm not going to lie and say that I have. Um, but I know I have something by Thurbo Sharkey um, in my collection. I just can't remember what it is. Van Morrison, Brown Eyed Girl, indeed. Well, all the br oh, Van Morrison, um, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the man looks like he drinks a wee bit, just a wee bit. Okay, we've had our quartered eggs at the ready here. Uh, we're boiling this uh, for 15 minutes. We have, we're going to be dressing the dish with the, uh, bits of parsley and, uh, we have chopped parsley. This could be going in later along with the kippers which we yeah, baked earlier which are flaked sitting over here so uh, again if you uh, are of a mind uh, follow on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Tumblr or Pinterest uh, and if you are of a mind and you're interested in, in what I've been doing here, for phase two that will be starting the spring, we'll be doing uh, definitely one night a week, going back from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe all over again to show what I've learned in the four-year process. Uh, when I did the very first thing, I didn't know the first thing, so you know I will have learned stuff by the time I get back to it. So uh, some dishes I'll repeat. Uh, some dishes I'll say that was a really bad choice and pick something different. Um, also, uh, then on the second night, when I do cook more than one night a week, we'll be doing the 50 states, working from, uh, what is it, Alaska? Alabama. From Alabama to, was it Washington? Uh, so we'll be doing the 50 states, and that should be kind of interesting because it isn't like they each have their own cuisine. 
and um, then we will be doing uh, on the potential third night, and here's where it gets interesting. We're going to be doing the foods of the world, but this time it won't be alphabetical. We'll be focusing on one cuisine of one particular place. This will allow me to focus on uh, a lot of the places I didn't get to focus on because I had to cover, like, say, all of China or all of France or all of Italy or all of India in one week or one night in the beginning. So that was insane. Thank you so much for the hearts. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, those will be picked at random uh, based on some recipes that I may have found and your suggestions. If you have a particular thing from a particular region that you think is really groovy and it doesn't, you know, it isn't one of those things that I've done before that I'll be doing again, what is the dish? The dish is Kipper's Kidgiri, which is a dish that's sort of uh, originating in India but became a British dish, uh, what with the love of curries. Uh, in Britain. So this is using kippers, uh, smoked uh, kippered herring, which is uh, from the North Atlantic. This was smoked. We baked it in the oven for about eight minutes with some bay leaves and flaked it. And in here we have the basmati rice, which is cooking in with the uh, cinnamon, uh, cardamom, uh, uh, curry powder, uh, monkfish with rice and curry. Monkfish with rice and curry. A uh, monkfish I can definitely find here. I can definitely find monkfish. That one, that's one thing I know. It's not cheap. It's with like the, the, the swimming lobster. Love basmati, yes. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, we have many different rices. I'm looking forward to doing uh, Bhutan again um, because uh, the one thing that the Bhutanese have sent to the rest of the world uh, culinarily speaking, since you can't export yak stuff, or at least not easily, is uh, the Bhutanese red rice, which I really wanted to do when I cooked Bhutan, and I couldn't find it then, and now I know where to find it. And I was saying I need to wait, you know, four years till it comes back around in rotation. So, uh, and, and, at some point, if I get enough people watching, at one time, and I have enough time to kill, I'll do my party trick for everyone again. I, I didn't really pull it off completely last time, and I'll probably need to practice a little more. But I'm trying to get, like I said, I'm trying to get an intro introductory video, which will explain, you know, the four-year challenge that we will at that point have completed, and how we will be starting in the fall with phase two, which will be on, uh, probably on Periscope. Uh, I am, I'm thinking that by that time that uh, Meerkat will be replacing our Meerkat stream with Busker. So uh, I gather now that Busker is solely on uh, iPhone, on the iOS system, but I'm sure that they'll be on the Android before too long. So uh, by the time we switch uh, from Meerkat to that, hopefully they'll be there. But check it out if you can. If you, if you like it, let me know what you think. Uh, we'll be on Periscope. I saw that. You tip people on that. Yes. Uh, and that would be nice because one of the things I would like to do is to be able to make this a self-sustaining project uh, rather than a kind of a money money draining one. So uh, that's nice. Yes, people can you know throw a, throw a buck you away or or so with the app, and that would be good because the YouTube videos have uh, not well. I've just been putting the entire stream, so there aren't a whole lot of people that would watch a two-hour stream you know, on YouTube, since that tends to be more in a uh, line of like three, four minute videos. Uh, I missed your party trick again. I have not done it yet. I mean, I did it one time uh, a few months ago and uh, I kind of panicked halfway through. So uh, I'm gonna have to, you know, there'll be, a, there, there'll have to be a moment, moment to do it. It needs to be special. There need to be enough people watching to make it worthwhile. So. Um, that's what's happening. Hopefully the husband will be here before too long. We've had another three more minutes on on this, uh, but uh, time is kind of running out. So let's find out where he is, shall we? How, how, how long will I have to tap dance? Dum -da -dum, 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 dum 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 This is just handy, the whole finding. Uh, I like my rice cooker. Yes, the rice cooker is a, a lifesaver. Um, when I started out, I didn't have one. And then my mother said, well, here I have one, you take it. And I said, well, I don't know really if I'm gonna use it. 
because I was discovering the many different ways to cook rice. Uh, and really, there are about 20 different ways to cook rice. I just thought it was just, you know, water boil, to cover that. And uh, so everything from making a um, risotto to, you know, soaking the rice first, to not soaking the rice, to rinsing the rice, to not rinsing the rice, uh, so many different ways and so many types of rice, it's kind of crazy. So, yeah. So I'm going to have to tap dance a lot, it looks like. Ooh, doggies! Yes, dinner isn't gonna be for a little while, it looks like. Good gosh almighty. Okay, well, we, uh, it, we have we did three more minutes here on this point anyway. Fun, 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 fun. I just love having a tap dance. So, uh, again, this is the Kipper's Kedgri. I'm seeing the accent on the, when I went to how to pronounce Kedgri. Uh, the How to Pronounce website came up with that, and uh, it said, but it was a, a robot voice. It said, Kedgri. And it's like, okay, maybe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, so we've got that in here. It smells really great. I learned something because I never heard of this. Oh, great. Uh, well, I actually hadn't either. Um, and just uh, Derek over here, I uh, uh, mentioned it. Uh, and I was going to consider it for Scotland, but I was sort of desperate looking for something to do for Northern Ireland. And I was about to do this scallop and, uh, and fish dish, but it was calling for haddock. Apparently haddock is uh, in all these recipes I kept finding, and you cannot find haddock here in South Florida, especially not this time of year. And so I got shot down on that one. So, and then that particular recipe served eight people and really only two and I was wondering how to you know cut it down and it's something that bakes in the oven like a like a pie with the mashed potatoes on top I thought about doing that and I was thinking well I need a, a green I need something some vegetable or something with that and I'll be damned if, if you look for Northern Ireland recipes you cannot uh, you know you t uh, it's just potatoes bread and baked goods no uh, yeah like pastries and stuff and that's that's all I keep finding. Uh, Ked Gary, Ked Ked Gary. I think I've got that then. Yay! But I, I got the accent on on the up on the end. Ked Gary, Ked Gary. Uh, I am baking carrots with Chinese five spices. It is smelling good. Ooh, the Chinese five spice is amazing. Good idea to cook from all around. Yes. Uh, and uh, let me tell you, when doing this whole business, um, and there's, I've always been a geography buff. And so when I started, oh, the, the, the YouTube video, I'm going to be making a YouTube video, which will not only introduce phase two, but doing other ones that will give like the entire origin story, the extended dance mix and the extended dance mix on how, you know, I came to, to go from never cooking and never learning to cook to, um, to starting the challenge. And now like four years later doing the, uh, the challenge, uh, online even. Uh, so, that uh, that's going to be coming. But I learned so many different things. 54 countries in Africa, more than any other nation. And uh, the fact that the history of the who conquered who and who was where for how long, all factors into global cooking uh, because uh, there was the influence of the colonizing force or the occupying power or the, you know, human transition over, you know, centuries and centuries and centuries. Uh, all these different things play a factor in what goes onto the plate in any given country. So it's really kind of crazy. Um, in this case, we're seeing things going from one side to the other. You said Bhutan, so you've researched that area in Nepal. They have great tea. Yes, they do. And uh, I did cook from Nepal. In fact, since we're sort of tap dancing here, oh, darn, I can't show you because it's right in the cabinet right behind your head. Uh, but there is a thing that is uh, common in um, Nepal call um, mustard oil. Um, Kedjeri, sorry. Okay, good. Um, it's called mustard oil. And mustard oil is used commonly in Nepal, in, um, I'm assuming Tibet, I don't know for sure, uh, but in Bhutan, but it, definitely in Nepal, and, and in northern India. And mustard oil is commonly eaten, people eat it all the time, 
and it uh, in the United States, there is a you can Google it, look on Wikipedia for mustard oil, and you'll see how in the United States there is an actual controversy. I'm obsessed with this area right now. Yes, but mustard oil. Um, the Food and Drug Administration uh, has not approved mustard oil for human consumption. Uh, it, uh, it, they say that for some reason it's not good for people. Uh, even though all these people from this part of the world would say, hey, we eat it all the time, what are you talking about? So when you go to an Indian market and you look for mustard oil, you will find it not with the food oils, you'll find it over with the cleaning products, sort of like on the edge of the cleaning product section before you get back to the food stuff. And you'll notice on the outside it says for external use only. That's the only way they're allowed to sell it. Uh, in the United States as long as they label it as such, but I did cook with it. I ate with it It's a very interesting color an odd flavor it wasn't really my favorite thing in the world uh, But I was really glad I had it and I still have it and I will never finish the jar because uh, There aren't that many countries that call for it Go figure and there are not that many countries left we have like I said we have uh, United Kingdom here we're finishing up with Scotland and Wales uh, Scotland on this is Northern Ireland. We're doing Scotland on uh, Sunday and uh, hey, and Scotland on, on, on Sunday and Wales on Tuesday, and then we'll be doing the United States. And uh, oh boy, that one's going to be interesting because uh, I want to find something that is uh, the yes. Oh, you're Scottish too. Wow. So we have, we have two Scots. Two Scots on hand. Faith and Bigora. Let me get my kilt. McTavish McNutt. And McGill the Cuddy is here. And McGill the Cuddy is here. Ah, how are we doing here? Are we close? We are. We are close. We are. Okay, we're getting here. So. Sorry, a Sunday something. Oh, shoot, I missed it. So here's what we're going to do. Now uh, that's been cooking long enough. So we're going to take that out and we're going to add in the, uh, the kippers. Here. We're going to mix those in. And... Uh, we're going to add in the parsley, the chopped parsley. That's odd, musically speaking. This is Northern Ireland. Sounds like Southern American. Uh, hey! So we're going to mix this all together and heat up the kippers. It says for a few minutes, but uh, it's going to be more than a few minutes because I saw where... Husband ain't home yet. It's on on the way. So I kind of know how far away he is. Oh, this looks good. This looks real. Oh, and it smells amazing. And I need to find that cinnamon stick and pull that out without burning my hands. One, two, three, go! Ah, go! Ah. Uh, Falkirk. Falkirk. I've heard of this. Falkirk. Oh, great. I made a mess. Okay, come back. Ooh. Don't like a mess. Come on. And this is weird with dressing it with the, with the hard-boiled egg. I find that uh, odd. I'm sure it'll taste great. I just find odd. Thank you so much for the hearts. Okay. Yeah, it was funny. I was seeing, um, when I look on Wikipedia for this dish, it talks about, thank you everyone for the hearts. Um, it, uh, it talks about, you know, rice dishes and whatever, and then it brings up other rice dishes and you have arroz con pollo and whatever, which is, you know, that's my people. And I was thinking, really? In fact, when I got started, 
I'm not the first person to try to cook around the world. I go, to my knowledge, I'm the first person to try to do it streaming online. Um, the uh, but when I started, I didn't I didn't know if anyone had already tried it or not. And it wasn't until I was a few countries in, uh, looking for recipes from Andorra, that I landed on uh, some websites that had the other people were doing this kind of thing. And my favorite one that I found. The guy is super, super detailed, so detailed that sometimes he would spend a year researching just to do one country uh, and would have to be so completely exact and absolutely nothing could be inauthentic. Everything had to be exact. Um, and, uh, when it, and he was working alphabetically, so that made things difficult. When he got to certain countries that you couldn't get certain things from certain countries and wherever. So... Uh, he got stop. He kind of stopped uh, at Cameroon, and then he took him out like three years, and he finally did Canada. And he wasn't gonna do just like a, a, um, a basic thing, so he had to do something really, really particular. And it came out really well. And uh, but it's been almost a year I've been waiting for him to get to you know pass Canada. So he started way before I did, and I passed him. But I asked him since I was such a fan of his site. I said, what? Uh, do you have any advice? And he says, well, if you ever get stuck, there's always something with chicken and rice. And uh, just about any country. Something with chickens and rice and maybe plantains. And uh, I'll be damned if he wasn't right. Uh, he died because not enough time. He would. Um, yeah, because there's not enough time to do that many. I mean, hundred. if you do one a year, you'll be dead. Um, he was doing it more, you know, but he had life and stuff. And there was someone else who decided to do, um, I had discovered it started before, you know, I did, and they were on the path, but this person decided, uh, and something I would have done myself in, in this weird decision, but decided to do, um, ev not every country, not only every country, uh, but every cuisine. So went alphabetically from A to Z, but then took all the portions of, say, Italy and China and India and Croatia and broke those into al in alphabetical order, leading to a list of some, some like 300 some odd cuisines. And I thought, uh, you're going to stop before you're done. Cause, and that's exactly what happened. She freaked out and her life changed and she stopped on the letter G. It was a G or L. Somewhere, somewhere L, L. I think it was Lebanon or something. She just kind of said, okay, I give. So, um, there are only two other people I know of that officially went from A to Z and finished. Uh, there's a, one other party that uh, may have done them all, but not in alphabetical order, so I don't know if they did them all yet or not. But their goal is to. So, uh, and then there are a couple other people that have started more recently. And some people gave up along the way, and some people are just doing a handful. So... Uh, but two. One is the Global Table Challenge, the Global Table Adventure, sorry, I'm the challenge. Um, that uh, she started before I did, she finished before I did, and she was on a weekly schedule also. Uh, her stuff is good, it's very geared towards families and her daughter. Uh, she's got a book deal. Uh, we will be having a book. We're going to be having a cookbook, and uh, allegedly we'll be able to take orders before Christmas. Allegedly. Um, I don't really believe that. Uh, but it is in the works with my uh, collaborator. We have uh, photographs of the food being taken uh, for the cookbook. There will be a Kickstarter for it uh, and a hardcover version uh, first. Uh, with enough orders come in, then there will be the uh, softcover version, which will be available in any bookstore or ebookstore online. Um, uh, La Cristia, thank you for the like, or the restream, rather. Uh, so, this is, again, our Kipper's Kidgeri, and uh, it's about done. We're going to be dressing, but we're waiting on uh, a certain someone to get home uh, for dinner. So that's, that's why the tap dancing right now. Uh, let's see how we're doing. We, we were three miles away. Are we any closer now? Seven minutes ago, we are almost here. 
Yes. Oh, we are here. Okie dokie. So, uh, we will be plating in moments. He's going to be surprised not having time to get dressed. Ha, ah, time to plate. Yes. Uh, so for that, uh, and thank you so much, Periscope people, for, for playing along. Um, that, uh, since I have to look up and the comments fly away, that's, uh, I know it's more of a challenge. So thank you for being here. So I've moved you to the plating station. Make sure you're in there tight. And uh, we'll be more expensive for signed copy uh, loyal fans. Uh, yes, uh, we're, yeah, we're gonna have to come up with, uh, cool bonuses. Uh, maybe we'll offer, like, you know, to, to cook you a meal. For, uh, for, for the angels, as it were. We'll package it up and send it to you, or you'll have to stuff yourself into a UPS shipping container and, you know, get yourself over here. So, uh, we have, uh, but we're figuring all this stuff out now. Uh, so we have our hard-boiled eggs, which is going to be dressed with. We have our parsley, which is going to be dressed with. And in, uh, we'll be plating really soon. So tippy-tap dance, tippy-tap dance. So again, United Kingdom, Scotland uh, is coming up next on Sunday, Wales on Tuesday, and then the United States. I don't know how many nights I'll be cooking for the United States, but my goal is going to be to do uh, dishes that uh, cover the entire U.S., that are not specifically regional uh, or belonging to one particular state. And uh, the fact that the United States is known for burgers and fries, and the, which is kind of a more lunchy kind of thing, uh, which we don't tend to do sandwiches. Uh, and then there's a uh, barbecue, which is difficult. Um, plating now. All right. So uh, ah, here we go. Uh, it's gonna be tricky. Is uh, is what I'm getting at though. So we're gonna get a serving. Yeah, so good. Yes. Okay, and here we go. This looks so good. It smells amazing. Mm -hmm. uh. And uh, yes, we will have uh, ah. leftovers for the weekend. Oh my goodness! Not that many. Not not, not like uh, okay. not like Tuesday. So <laughs> that's always an issue here. Part of the problem of cooking uh, for two instead of for for four or more. Uh, that's kind of one one of the reasons I never cooked before. So uh, we're gonna be dressing you with the hard-boiled eggs. Do you like that? You know what? Since they're quarters, I'm gonna put one on each side. Uh, thank you for the hey, love nail polish for the uh, like there. And ta-da! And then. Garnish with the bits of parsley, parsley. You know what? I'm using flat leaf Italian parsley, uh, which is all I've ever used, and I just kind of wonder. I've never seen any recipe that's ever asked for curly leaf parsley. Though when I was a kid, that's you know, you'd always be a sprig of curly leaf parsley, uh -huh. you know, stuck on every plate, and I said, what is this? garbage they stuck on my plate just to make it look something you don't eat that do you but this uh, this you do and it goes with the food so it is not a pointless garnish uh -huh. if, if, uh, my top chef friend who uh, helped inspire everything has a war on uh, on pointless garnish So, we have our kipper's kedge... Okay, one more time. Kedge... Uh, Kedgeri. And uh, that's what this looks like. It looks good. I need to take a picture for the blog before I forget, because that would be a bad thing, because once I eat it, I can't take a picture of it. And... Boom. So, that's it. Uh, for you, you see our... Uh, Northern Ireland, Kipper's Kedgeri, which is the uh, smoked kippers. 
uh, in rice, which has been seasoned with uh, curry sauce, curry um, powder, and turmeric and cinnamon. And uh, you know what? I forgot to do the most important thing. I really did. No one told me. Uh -huh. Here, so we taste. Tasting. Mmm. Mmm, that's good. Mmm. Yep. It works. Yes, uh, Derek says hello. Okay, so thank you. Uh, so thank you for uh, coming by. Uh, remember, follow here on Meerkat on uh, Periscope. And go to cliffyland.com um, and say um, follow on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on uh, Tumblr, on Pinterest, and uh, subscribe on YouTube if that's your jam. Uh, would appreciate any uh, subscriptions on YouTube particularly. So um, again, look for us on Sunday night. I'm from UK. We don't have that dish. Uh, and this came from a restaurant in uh, in Belfast, actually. Um, so. Uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, and it was also suggested by viewers here on Meerkat uh, from the UK also. So um, there we go. So check us out, follow, subscribe, like, all that stuff, and we'll see you on Sunday if you're here over the water. On Sunday for Scotland, and then Tuesday for Wales, and then next week we'll be on to the United States. So thanks for joining us. I'll uh, catch you guys later, and uh, yep, and you too. Till then, happy eating.